Hello, my name is Dr. Andy Blauvelt. I'm a dermatologist and IPC counselor from Portland, Oregon. I run a clinical trial center called the Oregon Medical Research Center, and I'm happy to talk to you today about the psoriasis pipeline, upcoming new systemic drugs. I have potential conflicts of interest in that I'm a scientific advisor and clinical study investigator for a number of different drug companies involved in creating new drugs for psoriasis. Here I'm showing you the currently available biologic choices that we have on the left. There are 11 of those and the currently available oral drug options we have for psoriasis on the right. And we have four of those currently. Now I'm adding the three new drugs, um, two new biologics, bimikizumab and merikizumab on the left and ducravacitinib on the right as the drugs that I'll talk about today, the ones that I think you should know some of the, these data to help you incorporate these new drugs into your practice. If we first look at the evolution of, the psori of psoriasis immunopathogenesis, we see that over time, as our understanding has increased on the immunology of this disease, we've focused more and more on the IL-23 TH17 pathway. And what that has done is that it has allowed us to create new drugs that target key components of this pathway. And as you see here on the right, really all of the new drugs in the last 10 years have been focused on targeting components of this particular pathway. Now, why is that important? It's important because as we get more narrowly focused on psoriatic inflammation, as opposed to more broad acting drugs or those focused on just broad um, anti-inflammatory drugs, we gain higher safety margins and higher efficacy um, as seen um, with the more recently developed drugs. Now here I'm, I'm showing you a schematic of the IL-23 TH17 pathway. We have IL-23 more upstream on the left, IL-17A as a key component in the middle, and then the keratinocytes as downstream cells that are acted upon by the upstream cytokines. What I'm also showing you are the four drugs now that target IL-17A. That's secukinumab, ixikizumab, brodalumab, and the new drug bimikizumab. Of note, however, is that bimikizumab also blocks IL-17F, which is another IL-17 isoform and it has also been shown to be important in psoriasis pathogenesis. So bimikizumab would represent the first IL-17A and IL-17F blocker. Here I'm showing you the key pivotal phase three results for bimikizumab. We have PASI-75, PASI-90, PASI-100, and IGA-01 shown. We have the BIMI um, results shown in green. We have the comparator results, which in this case is used to Kinumab or Stellara, shown in orange. And we see excellent responses all throughout the, the week 52. Um, and I want to point out in particular, we see very high um, PASI 100 levels. It's 58.6% at early time points and 64.5% at the week 52 time point. So really high PASI 100 results. Now this slide shows what happens when we withdraw bimikizumab in patients who have responded. And so that's on the lower part of this slide. And we see that about 28 to 32 weeks after withdrawal, about half of the patients are losing their response. And then what I'm showing at the top is the retreatment response in those patients that have been withdrawn and go back on drug, we see that they have excellent responses when they're retreated with bimikizumab. We also have data on bimikizumab for psoriatic arthritis. This is um, results from a phase 2b study, and the key primary endpoint here was ACR20 response at week 12. And we had different doses of bimikizumab, and we see that with all of the doses, we see very high ACR20 responses um, in some into the 60 and 70% range, higher than what we've seen with any other drug for PSA. Regarding safety of bimikizumab, 
we have one issue really to worry about right now, and that's mucocutaneous candidiasis, uh, or oral thrush. It's fairly common, occurring in about 15% of patients. However, most cases are mild to moderate and manageable. Regarding inflammatory bowel disease, it's still unclear at this time whether we're going to see a signal with bimikizumab like we've seen with other IL-17A blockers. All other concerns, serious infections, mace, cancer, really have not been seen with this new biologic. So in summary, we have excellent efficacy for bimikizumab. It actually is slightly higher than the very best biologics that we currently have on the market, especially in terms of PESI 100. We have excellent durability thus far, over one year. We have effectiveness shown in psoriatic arthritis, although we need phase three data for confirmation. And basically, we, we're looking at mucocutaneous candidiasis as the issue um, in regards to safety. It's very convenient. It's given every one to two months, um, similar to other IL-17 blockers. Um, however, I should note that um, the every two-month dosing could be a novel, uh, a novel feature for this particular drug compared to IL-17A alone blockers. Now we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about merikizumab, the second biologic that's likely to be approved. Merikizumab selectively blocks IL-23, similar to what we know with giselkiumab, tildrakizumab, and rizinkizumab. IL-23 is acting more upstream in this key immunologic pathway, and what we get with more upstream targeting is that we get less frequent dosing every two to three months versus every one to two months with more downstream blockers. We also seem to have uh, an advantage in safety where we don't see candidiasis or inflammatory bowel disease with IL-23 blockers. Here I'm showing you phase three results for merikizumab. Here the comparison in gold was secukinumab or Cosentix. We see comparable responses, passing 90 responses at week 16 with Cosentix. But then if we look at the week 52 results on the right, we see that over time, merikizumab is superior to secukinumab or Cosentix. Now I'm showing you PASI 100 responses. Um, again, comparable to secukinumab at week 16, but superior to secukinumab at week 52, uh, with 58.8% .8 of patients achieving PASI 100 at week 52. The safety of merikizumab, I already alluded to it, is very similar, if not identical, to the um, safety of other selective IL-23 blockers. There's really no evidence or signals of any of the things that we tend to worry about with other biologics. So in summary, for merikizumab, we have excellent efficacy that's comparable to the very best biologics currently on the market. We have good durability over one year. Something I didn't show is that it also has been shown to be effective for ulcerative colitis. Um, the safety seems excellent so far. Um, it's very convenient every two to three months. So lastly, I'm going to touch on ducravacitinib. This is a TIC2 inhibitor, and it blocks intracellular signaling of key cytokines that are involved in psoriasis pathogenesis, such as IL-12, IL-23, and type 1 interferons. So TIC2 is in the family of the JAKs, the, ja the Janus kinases. It's an intracellular signaling molecule, as shown here. Um, and so this oral drug option is a small molecule. It goes inside the cell and inhibits TIC2, therefore blocking function, if you will, of IL-12, IL-23, and type 1 interferons. Now here we only have phase 2 data so far as, as of my um, taping of this talk. And I'm showing you here PASI 75 on the left, PASI 90, phase 2 study, different doses. Um, we have nice response with the 6 milligram twice daily dosing, and we see PASI 75 response at about 70%, which is comparable to adalibumab or Humira, and really higher than what we've seen with any other oral drug options. So in summary, the efficacy is good. Um, it's less than most biologics, but better than all the oral drugs available on the market. 
The durability right now is unknown. Um, that will be coming with phase three studies. We also don't know its effect on other diseases of importance, such as psoriatic arthritis. Regarding safety, we have some nausea, some headaches, and also reports of acne, increased CPK, and a possible herpes zoster signal, but that needs to be worked out with more phase three data. So here we have a new oral drug option uh, dosed every day um, with, with excellent efficacy, likely to be the best oral drug um, option available for our patients. So the key take home points for this lecture is that the new pipeline drugs for psoriasis will offer excellent efficacy with slightly better or comparable efficacy to the currently available best biologics. Uh, we will have a better pill option in ducravacitinib, um, and we will likely have a better option for psoriatic arthritis patients with bimikizumab. Thank you very much, and I hope you learned something today.